the SI system has um, seven base units that we um, do as the basis for all of the measurements in any of the things that we do in physics. So um, the base units are the following. These are probably largely familiar. So the first one is meters, which has a symbol lowercase m. It's really important that you get the case correct for, this, um, for the symbols. Kilograms, which is kg, and seconds for time. Okay, and actually for this class, these are, I believe, the only ones that we're going to use. Um, every other unit that shows up will be built out of these three for Physics 121. Now there are, as I said, seven base units altogether. You don't really need to know these for this class, but just for completeness, I'll tell you what they are. So um, one is the ampere. Uh, this one you will learn about in 122. It's a unit of electrical current. Um, one that you've probably seen before is the Kelvin. This is a unit of temperature. One Kelvin is the same size as one degree Celsius. Um, another one that you may have seen in chemistry is the mole. So a mole is um, in some ways not even a, like really a necessary unit. It's just a number. Um, it's some specific number of atoms. Um, and then finally, the last one is a little more um, specialized to a specific field, and that one's called the candela. Uh, you've probably or possibly never heard of candelas before, but a unit that is um, very closely related to the candela is the lumen, which is the, um, the way that we measure the brightness of a light bulb in terms of the way the human eye sees it, um, and the candela is related to that. So it has to do with both brightness and specifically the biology of the human eye in how we see things. Okay, but like I said, uh, meters, kilograms, and seconds are going to be the basis for most of the things that we do this quarter, or almost all of them. Um, so how is that possible? How can these three um, units, just for distance, mass, and time, give us more interesting things? And the answer is that we build some compound units. So these are not base units. Um, the basic units are the ones that I just listed, but we can use the base units to build lots of more interesting um, kinds of things. So one um, straightforward example is a speed. So we can use distances and times to construct a speed. So meters divided by seconds um, essentially tells us that if you go 10 meters every one second, then you're moving 10 meters per second, and voila, we have a speed. Um, some other ones that are fairly straightforward are meters squared as a unit of area. So you can measure the size of your house, the floor plan of your house in meters squared, um, or you know the size of a lot outside, or the area of a piece of paper, or anything. Um, additionally, we could do meters cubed to find a volume, so meters by meters by meters. Um, or another one that you're probably familiar with is density. So we could have a mass, some number of kilograms per volume, so kilograms per meters cubed. And we can just keep going. There are a lot of derived units, probably an unlimited number of units we can derive from these basic units. Um, some of those have their own special name, so um, and some of them can actually get quite complicated. So over the course of the quarter, we will um, build up more and more complicated units to describe more and more complicated concepts. Okay, so um, one example that I'll give you, and you don't have to know this, I'm just like telling you what this is, is the watt. So one watt, which is a capital W, is one kilogram meter squared per second cubed. Okay, and that probably seems like nonsense. I know what a kilogram is. I can make sense of meter squared, but what on earth is a second cubed? Um, and it's okay that it doesn't make sense yet. As we go, as I said, we'll learn how to think about this. And the answer is basically that um, we're going to build it up one step at a time from other units. So we know, for instance, what a meter per second is. That's a unit of speed. Um, if your speed is changing, like say you go from one meter per second to two meters per second, and it takes some amount of time to do that, we can represent that in the number of meters per second per second. Um, if I take some object, some real object, and I have it move in the way I just described, then um, the mass of that object times the um, rate that the speed is changing, that gives me a unit that I can make sense of. Um, that tells me essentially the force that I need to exert on that object. If I exert a force for some distance, then I get um, an energy, it turns out. And if I exert some amount of energy each second of time, then I get a power, which is what watts measure. Okay, so um, this should seem kind of weird and a little bit nutty, um, I think, at this point, and that's totally fine. I just want to show you that we can build up lots of more interesting things from these really basic ideas.